just about any and everything you can think of, I messed up. I've had two patellar dislocations, tearing in my quad, tearing in my hamstring, vertebral fractures, sprained ankles. Soccer was not, not kind to my body. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. What was like the most common reoccurring injury? I would say low back. I have my three key pillars. So what I got from that was step number one, if you're experiencing back pain or if you have a desk job, to either prevent or to aid in your low back pain. One of the most important things is welcome back to the Tot Not Told podcast. Today, we're doing something a little bit different. This is something I've always wanted to do, never had the opportunity, but today is finally the day where we're bringing on our first guest, our first interviewee to the Tot Not Told podcast. And today, I'm so excited to introduce to you my great friend, Jake Jerry's. What's going on, guys? Thanks for coming on today, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. So Jake is part of the Top Nuts Hold team. Uh, we've been working together for, we just hit about two years. Our two-year anniversary just passed, right? Yeah, coming on two. Yeah, that's been two awesome. years. That's awesome. That's yep. awesome, man. And so ultimately, um, part of the online coaching process is after the clients go through me, I figure out who they are best fit for, whether it's me, whether it's Jake, or Coach Nate, who you guys will meet in the near future. But ultimately, Jake has been one of the coaches that I've seen progress faster than probably any coach I've worked with. I've worked with probably about 10 coaches over the last six years. And ultimately, Jake's been able to progress and also his background uh, has allowed him to succeed as a coach in terms of giving his clients great results um, from many different realms and not only just strength and building muscle, losing body fat, but also rehabbing injuries. And so we're going to dive in today to some of his experiences, some of his knowledge, and some of the things that make Jake who he is today. So Jake, I just want to start off um, maybe just like a spark noted version, um, but ultimately like what led you from what took you from where you are today, what got you into fitness, and then what ultimately led you to become a coach? Yeah. All right. So first off, thank you so much for having me on the uh, Be Tight Not Told podcast. Dude, thank you. It is an honor to be the first guest of Heck what yeah. I would presume to be many in the future. Absolutely. Um, so for me, my fitness journey began, I mean, I guess to take it way back to when I used to play soccer, and mm -hmm. that's, that's kind of how, well, we played soccer under the same clubs and at the same high school. Yep. So that's where I began my athletic journey, right? Um, as far as resistance training goes, uh, I actually started resistance training probably around 13 or 14 years old, just messing around with weights uh, at, the, at the gym in my house. And I was definitely doing things incorrectly. <laughs> that's how we all learn, man. Yeah. I Trust me, when I started, I remember so many times. I, I remember I running into like... My favorite thing, man, when I was first starting out was I'd go to the biggest, buffest, most jacked dude in the gym <laughs> who like everyone was intimidated by. I was like, like just kind of like that childlike um, curiosity. I'd go up to that guy and be like, hey, man, like, could you like, help my move my form on this? Yeah. And they would always give me like that bodybuilder, like half rep technique. But it was cool learning from people like that. But I feel yeah. you, man. I, my form was I, if I go look back at some photos oh, yeah. and videos, <laughs> it's embarrassing. It's you know? atrocious, even bro. <laughs> Even when I started training people, man, it was yeah. just it's different. But, yeah. So yeah. started off weightlifting at home, just trying to build a little bit more muscle and definitely doing things incorrectly. Like went through the whole nine yards of messing up a lot of different joints, even so far as uh, having vertebral fractures in my spine oh. from what I would presume to be deadlifting incorrectly. Dude, um, so... That was your mid back, lower back, like lower back. Oh. And I was young. I was like 15 or 16 years old dealing yeah. with vertebral fractures in my spine. Um, and that's when I started to realize, you know, the resistance training can be a dangerous game if you're doing it incorrectly. Absolutely. Um, and I think that kind of set me on the journey of trying to figure out how to do things correctly, mm -hmm. which took a long time. And even to this day, I'm still learning how to do things correctly, you know? Absolutely. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I had I had to learn things the hard way, which is what's, what's cool about this job is that we have the ability to help people not have to go through that. And they can learn things correctly mm -hmm. like, from the start of their resistance training journey as, to, as opposed to having to go through incorrectly and possibly 100%. get hurt, you know? I mean, that's what... TNT stands for it's to, to teach people, man. And uh, that's ultimately what led us here so that people can learn the right way from the, from the get go. So yeah. 
ultimately, after you went through some injuries, uh, you started working out in your home. I know uh, you had a great soccer sport background. So after that, um, after going through like some of the beginning, early stages of your injuries, like mm-hmm. where, where did you, would you play? You played sports in high school, right? Yeah. Soccer. Okay. Soccer all yeah, four years? Soccer all four years. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. And then going into graduation, like when you graduated high school, what was the next step for you? So after I got out of high school, um, I enrolled at community college okay. near home. So I was going through doing my first two years of college there, my okay. undergrad. And um, I had uh, my dad came home one day from physical therapy and at the place he was going to, uh, they desperately needed some hires. You know, they were mm-hmm. they were short staffed on AIDS. And so my dad comes home. He's like, he's like, you're into working out like you're into fitness. Like you should get you should go apply at the physical therapy office. And I was like, but I don't know anything pertaining to physical therapy. I barely have resistance training under my background. I had like maybe like three or four years of lifting incorrectly. Yeah. Right. So I go in and I landed the job at what was that? I was probably 18 years old, 19 years old. And I started working in the physical therapy office. And so that was like the next. That's amazing. Progression. Yeah. So my, my quick question for you is like, what, you know, it sounds like you started lifting really young. Yeah. And it sounds like, you know, you had a natural affinity for it and um, clearly have some natural genetics for muscle building. But yeah. when it comes to actually starting that, like, I feel like a lot of people don't find fitness or health or, um, or later in life they find it because they have to or because they feel insecure about their, like, self-image, for example. But, like, my question is, like, how did you find fitness so young or what yeah. made you – what drove you towards that? What made you decide, like, oh, I'm going to go pick up stuff and put it back down? Yeah, so – going through and playing soccer Mm -hmm. um i was always the guy who was never the most talented Mm -hmm. but i was always the hardest worker and i think any of my teammates to this day like if i called them up and be like hey you know who who was the one working (laughs) around the clock what what am i remembered for yeah Yeah. exactly and so i mean i was always first one in last one out if i wasn't injured i was first one in last one out kind of like that that mamba mentality and i still have that to this day i still like to be the first one in i still like to be the last one out and i feel like that not being talented at anything athletic wise like i was good but i wasn't naturally gifted made me work harder and 100 and so the resistance training was like a, a branch off that i could i could become stronger like a branch mm-hmm. off of soccer that would tie back into my performance so that's why i fell in love with it and then it just kind of went its own separate way after after i finished playing soccer i love that yeah. i love that that's awesome man and uh Man, that's crazy. Actually, I didn't know that about you. And I actually relate to you a ton because like when I first stepped on the soccer field, my little brother was like the most gifted. You yeah, know, yeah, he's super, my, yeah. Dylan's just gifted when it comes to a soccer ball. And so like when when I saw him starting to play, he like he went from like never playing soccer to like the captain, yeah. like lead scorer. And to I was the like, all American like, on our team. I know that's yeah. so cool. I was like, I wanna, I wanna play soccer. And like when I was when he was how he was two or three grades, but he was like four, no, four or five grades. He's three and a half years younger than me. And I remember like his first team he joined, I was like, oh, you know, it's like after my knee injury, I was yeah. like, I'll put some cleats on a try. And like these little kids were schooling me, but I was like, man, that kind of makes me want to work harder for it. Exactly. And so I, that was very similar, man. I wanted yeah. to work. I wanted to be able to work harder than everyone because I was far less skilled than everyone else. So yeah. um, very relatable. So that's awesome. So that drove you into using soft or lifting as a catalyst yep. for better performance as a soccer yep. player. Hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. And so I, <laughs> my perspective Absolutely. was always like, you know what? I might not be the most gifted, but I am the hard. I am going to be the hardest working. I love that. And then if I fall short at the end of the day, I gave it as much effort as I could give. You know, and 100%. then you just continue to move so on. So, what made you stop playing soccer after high school? Why didn't you go I was further? dealing with a lot of injuries? Okay, a lot of injuries from soccer. Can you elaborate? Oh, just about any and everything you can think of. I messed up, like knees. I've I've had two patellar dislocations, which is Jeez. I'm actually dealing with rehabbing one right now from a fight. 
which I'm, you know, we'll dive into that. We'll dive bit. into that. But I've had two patellar dislocations. I've had tearing in my quad. I've had Ooh. tearing in my hamstring, Crazy. vertebral fat, vertebral fractures, uh, sprained ankles. Ugh, it's just soccer was not not kind to my body. Yeah. We need to put like hashtag injury prone on your arm or something. Yeah, yeah. No, I was I was definitely injury prone like coming up. And yeah. I think there's a lot of factors that go into that. Yeah. But which is crazy because it almost sounds like that PT job was almost like a a calling. Yeah. So the way that I perceive it to be is that I had to go through all these injuries so that I could learn from each and every single one of them. And it's funny because most of the injuries that people have come to me with through this through this job that we do, I have already rehabbed for myself and I have experience with. So that's why, you know, a lot of my work up to this point has been rehabbing people. I've yeah. dealt with low back, knees, shoulders, elbows, ankles, like all of it. And I have experience with all of it just from it's crazy. Just from the injury history of myself, you know. And, and that's one of the, the best things about the coaching experience and the journey is like, I feel like most coaches that get into the space, at least the good ones that I know and that I've worked with all come from a place of like, I want to prevent you from going to through, go through yeah. the same exactly. shitty, yep. horrible, uh, you know, taunting experience I had to go through. So this is great and unique. And like Jake's my go-to like, Every time we, I get a client or we TNT as a whole gets a client is like when we have someone that has lagging or nagging injuries or uh, knee pain, hip pain, ankle pain, back pain, Low something back. That that's kind of bothering yeah. them. It's like the most common stuff we see. And when, when we run across those people, it's like, okay, Jake's our go-to guy. Yeah. So I love having you as someone on the team, be, for, especially for that reason, because um, we have more value to add to the universe, to add to our clients. Yeah. So um, that's amazing, man. So just to kind of recap, we went from high school, a little bit before that you started lifting, high yep. school, you started the PT. So how long did you do um, the PT job yeah. for? Was that something you did for a long time? Was it just a short little yeah, bit? Yeah, of- so shout out to Body Mechanics uh, in Simi Valley. There we go. Um, that two years-ish that I spent there during my undergrad was... Uh, one of the most transformative experiences I've ever had in life. Uh, I will forever be grateful for the time spent in that office and the knowledge that uh, I was able to obtain and bring into my career with me. Um, I think, you know, being there for as long as I was, I was there for almost two years, right? Mm-hmm. And I worked with so many different people and there were so many different like injuries that would come across or like, you know, you had people coming in, um, like after car accidents and they were just debilitated and you could just see it. That's like they crazy. Were just, they were just crushed, you know, like their whole life, everything that they've ever known is, you know, like completely altered just from the accident. One freak accident. One, something. Yeah. So that being said, like what, what was like the most common reoccurring injury? Was it like a shoulder? Yeah. Was it back? Or like, cause I know PT can be for like, acute stuff so in terms of like so many different situations okay. and so many different cases did like, you f- see one that you're like man i keep seeing this over and over and yeah over. and it, it was definitely low back shoulder okay. shoulders and knees those were like the most common low back shoulders and knees i would say low back i would say first and foremost was number low one back. and and there was a common theme across the board with low back patients was uh sedentary lifestyle and being seated too much okay yeah. this is fun we can kind of let's let's dive into that a little bit more because i feel like we'll, we'll get into this more as we get into like your training and like where you are now but yeah i think while we're here talking about low back and sedentary lifestyle because i'm sure most of the people that we know most of the people that will probably watch this um, as you know, the podcast is a little bit newer, so, you yeah. know, uh, we're po- hopefully we get a couple decent views, you know, yeah. um, but ultimately more importantly, I hope that at least one person watching this gets some value and I feel like this could be for that person. And so mm-hmm. when it comes to, um, sitting a lot and having this low back pain, which again is super common, yeah. what, what a kind of approach would you take then and, or now to, aid in that low back pain or even prevent it from coming in the first place there's so many different things and yeah there's so many things that give me like 
one to three. Yeah, I have my, I have my like three. I have my three key pillars. Let's right? go. Let's go. Um, so the first thing I always tell people when they come in and they have low back pain, I'm like, stop sitting so much. Like, <laughs> like it's gonna compress your spine. But I can't because my job. Yeah, you got to get up and move around. Okay. You got to take longer trips to the bathroom. You got to get up more frequently. Stretch, walk. You can't. It's hard because I, you know, a lot of people. It is their job. Like they're seated and. They got to work, but also at the same time, if you're sitting there nine to five all day, every day, you're just, you're just compressing your spine, you know, standing upright and they sit, it doesn't help when they, yeah, when they're sitting, yep. which like, is a whole nother set of issues yeah. on the, on the 100%. neck, mostly in the shoulders. But my three key pillars, when people come in with low back pain, um, I think the, the primary emphasis goes towards strengthening the core. To work to stabilize the spine, hundred percent. Especially because most people have very underactive core muscles, and everybody thinks when they come in like core is your six pack abs. Like there's a common misconception surrounding that, and it's so much more than that. It's your glutes, it's your abdomen, it's your lats, right? So we try to get all those core or those large muscle groups engaged, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then you know, usually um, due to the fact that they're sitting so much, their hips are extremely stiff right so um my go-to my bread and butter is like that banded uh banded hip mobilization mm -hmm. basically we just want to get the hips mobilized and you see me doing that with my clients all the yeah. time right so hip mobile what, what is that exercise called again banded hip mobilization i stole it from okay. squat university there we yeah go. That so one. so if you want to look that up that's a yeah good, doctor, I, I use that one a lot dr aaron horshig um okay. from squat university okay. and then there's also the Stuart miguel big three okay so i follow those two uh, but yeah, I mean, get the core active and engaged. That's going to take some of the tension off the spine immediately and work mm -hmm. to stabilize it. Mobilize those hips. That way, you know, if, if you're sitting all day and your hips are stiff, that's definitely not going to contribute to the well-being of the spine. Absolutely. Um, and then lastly, it would be spinal decompression. So, okay. I mean, spinal decompression kind of comes as a result of those two things, but there's also specific ex exercises and movements that I have my clients go through to decompress the spine. Can you give me one of your favorites? Ooh, there's so many. Give me one. Yeah. Um, I think one of my favorites would be just like a dead hang. Okay. Yeah. So dead hang or, or even feet yeah. up or hands upside down hang or, or... Oh, no, no, no. Just, just hanging. Just, hang. just yeah. hang from the bar. Just hang from the I bar. Love that. Yeah. Just hang from the okay. bar. So what I got from that was step number one, if you're experiencing back pain or if you have a desk job, to either prevent or to aid in your low back pain. One of the most important things is let's prevent more from happening by moving more. So more steps. Yep. Number two would be um, strengthening your core. Yep. And I think number three would be allowing for more movement in these joints. So by working on mobility, flexibility, so your hips yep. and your spine. So hanging, um, doing the hip mobilizations, I think that would be the best way to summarize that. Would you say yeah, that's pretty accurate? It's pretty okay, accurate. Cool. It's cool. Pretty spot on. So kind of rewinding just a little bit back to kind of your physical therapy route, um, kind of what you see most commonly. So after you finish physical therapy, yeah. it sounds about two years, which took was about two years of school as well, right? Yeah. So both those came to an end around the same time, it sounds like. Yeah, because I I was transferring over to Cal State Fullerton. And so that's yeah. where we kind of touch back, reconnect in life. And then, um, you know, making the, the move from Simi Valley out to Orange County, um, ultimately, you know, that prompted me to have to leave the job and go mm -hmm. pursue other things in life. Yeah, so, absolutely. yeah, I was grateful for my time there though. Like, yeah, seriously, it taught me a lot. And you went from, you know, living at home your whole life. You went from, you know, the experience of having a job to, okay, I'm going to move out. And I, I know firsthand from Simi Valley, both of us, you know, where we were great young kids playing soccer and tag on the streets growing yep. up and then um, coming to a new place, Orange yeah. County, living on your own, being on your own, um, learning how to survive on your own. An experience I wouldn't trade for the world. Huh? All, <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, it's like you, you, like, I don't think people our age or younger even realize like it's it's a definitely quite the experience but it's one of the most humbling things like going through it it's like damn oh, yeah. that was tough yeah but after you're over it you're like man i needed that yeah because it makes you it forces you to grow up really fast and um i know you experience a lot of like 
development in that time in terms of like coming into who you really want to be and who you are and, yep. you know, getting away from all of, you know, family, your background, your history, all of that, I think allowed you to really come out of your shell and become unique and in, in, an actual individual. And so, um, that being said, like what was the beginning stages or, you know, what, what ultimately, what was your first, you know, couple months or year of school? Like, what did you think of it? And then what kind of brought you from that, like transfer to Cal State Fullerton to like maybe contacting Tyler, um, yeah. about training or that experience? Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, you and I had always stayed in touch. Absolutely. Like we were, we were in touch on social media and I saw you down here doing your thing. And immediately when I moved down, I was like, oh, I got to stop by self-made and go see what, what, what's going on with Tyler. Cause he's got it. He's got it going on. Like I was always keeping up with your videos and watching everybody Appreciate train. That. And yeah. I was like, damn, he's got a good thing going on here. It seems super dope. I love the energy and the impact that you're making. And so I remember <laughs> I had just moved down and we had reconnected and we went to that fish spot over in Fullerton. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> good and stuff. so, and from there having that conversation with you definitely, um, definitely intrigued me as to your line of work and, you know, possibly getting in involved. And it I was, remember. yeah, it was cool. Um, when I moved down initially from Simi Valley and moved to Fullerton, mm -hmm. going to state at Cal State Fullerton, where I did uh, an additional year and a half of schooling, that was definitely a big transition. And it was, it was good and bad. Like there was some good high points and it was fun. And there was also some really low points that got dark. And so, but I feel like, you know, having that experience <laughs> is something that I, I genuinely wouldn't trade for the world. Like I had to move out and yeah. go be out of the house to begin to discover who I am as an individual and what kind of person I want to be navigating this world. Right. Mm -hmm. And so for me, once I was able to start to get in touch with you and start to mentor underneath you um, and shadow you while you were working. I was like, damn, this is such a cool job. And it was right in line with kind of, I mean, it's very similar to what I was doing back at body mechanics at, at the physical therapy office. Right. Yep. Um, except now I had this ability to do it in my own way where somebody comes in with a, a set of issues instead of going and having and training them underneath the physical therapist guidelines and their exercises, I now had this freedom to pick and choose what do I think is going to be best for people based on my knowledge through schooling, my experience through work, um, and further furthering my education. Right. So, yeah, yeah it was it, it's it's cool having that ability and that freedom to decide what we think is best for our clients based on where they're at. Absolutely. That freedom. Yeah. You, you become Picasso. Yeah. And, and I love that because before when you were in the physical therapy office, it was like, because you were an assistant, you weren't a physical therapist. No. You're not a physical therapist. I'm not a physical therapist. Uh, we're not doctors, mm -hmm. but what we do is we combine our experience, education and practices and repeated when, when you tend to get repeated good results with people, you tend to repeat those actions. And yep. so you took some of the, a lot of the things that you learned from there and you were able to um, paint your own canvas, yeah. right? Now you had a blank canvas and you had someone coming in and it wasn't just, here's how to rehab. It was like, oh man, I can give you advice on yeah. your nutrition. I can tell you like, hey, you know, we should try to work on eating more protein. And in combination, you get to hear more about their lifestyles and the things they do outside of the gym that ultimately are contributing to their pain or their discomforts. Yeah. And um, what's my favorite part, and I think that you enjoy this as well, is that we get such a diversity of clients. Yeah, that's we like probably my favorite the part. the same thing over and over again where it's like, oh, I got to repair this, got to yeah. repair this, got to repair this. It's like, oh, this person's like pretty healthy and they just want to take it to the next level. Great. Yeah. This person has never touched a weight in their life awesome i love the diversity yeah i've worked with so many different types of people and i i think that's where i probably love this job the most is how many different walks of life that we get to mm -hmm. work with and i look at my job as like i think when people hear the word personal trainer they just think of somebody that's gonna put them through a workout for an hour and then send them home sore shit mm -hmm. like somebody that's just gonna bully them and yep. i feel like that's such a common misconception surrounding mm -hmm. our job 
because Thank the you. job that we do for people, I know that, you know, me, you, Coach Nate, like we all are in the business of helping people make healthy, sustainable lifestyle changes, yeah. right? And just meeting people where they're at, right? And so for some people coming in, that looks like rehab. For some people coming in, that looks like um, just, you know, getting in, getting back into moving their body because mm -hmm. they've been inactive for so long. And Absolutely. For some people, it looks like making some really significant dietary changes. And then for some people, it's all of the above, right? Mm -hmm. So- I think, you know, more than anything, we're in the business of genuinely helping people with like health, building healthy, sustainable yeah. habits. And there's so much that we can help people with yeah. based on our knowledge. And man, I appreciate you saying that, number one, because that's truly the environment and the the, the methodology. The, that's the mission of TNT is to change people's lives and to ultimately like and people think I'm crazy when I say this, but like our goal is not to work with our clients forever. Our goal, yeah. my goal and our goal as a team, as a unit, as a, as a philosophy, TNT, our goal is to work with you for a short period of time, whether that's short can mean a six months, a couple months, it could mean a couple years. Yeah. But, and you look at the lifespan of someone, that's a fraction of their time on this planet. But ultimately our goal is to work with you, teach you everything you need to know so you can go off on your, we want you to go off on your own and actually keep going. Like I actually, funny thing, I called a client that I haven't talked to in probably like five or six years from when I first started and just checked in on her. I said, how's, hey, how's everything going? Like you're still, she, still working out three days a week. Yes. I'm still eating my protein. Yes. So those things, when those stick, yeah, man, like dope. I, I always just tell people like how I want to gauge my success as a coach is not based off your results, your before and after picture. Like, sure. Those are cool and those are cool to show your friends. And I'm sure, you know, your friends are jealous of it. But ultimately, what, what's more important to me as a coach is like, I want to be able to call you 5, 10, 15, 20 years from now. And see you're still doing it. And, and hear that yeah. you're still doing yep. the core principles. I'm getting my steps in. I'm drinking water. I'm sleeping good. I'm working out two to three days a week. Protein like, intake. It, it's, it's the, the big healthy. rocks. Yeah. It's the big pillars. And like, Ultimately, if people can do, do those things for a long period of time, they will feel the best. They will look the best. They'll perform their best in their everyday lives. And, yep. and that's the mission we're on. And so um, thank you again for saying that. It means Absolutely. a lot to me. So ultimately, when when I come back to you know this process of you going from what's cool is that I remember like when you started at the gym, it was like, okay, Jake, um, it, funny thing, <laughs> and I, hopefully you're cool with me sharing Absolutely. this, but I remember – when you came in, um, I had a call with Jake and his dad and it was like, I had to sell both of them yeah. on like, Jake was really passionate. Jake, when he thinks about his passion, nothing else matters. It's like, yeah. I'm, he's, he's Locked very in. lasered focused. And his dad was like, well, how much does it cost? And I was like, I'm not cheap, man. <laughs> but, but I remember his dad, um, also your dad was, was great and very graceful, graceful and giving you the opportunity, yeah. um, giving me the opportunity to mentor you. And he allowed us to, to kind of get this journey started. And I remember the first like six months or so, we just started like yeah. at me training you. And then you'd come in on your, my, your off hours of not training and watch me train clients. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that was an awesome experience. And I wish more coaches would do that because, um, man, the stuff we see, yeah. we've seen a lot of stuff in the gym. And definitely, man, some of it irks me and, uh, going to normal gyms, seeing other trainers and even at our own facility. But yeah. at the end of the day, um, you got great experience. You got to learn. Um, I don't know how or why, but I think you're a visual learner and, and an auditory learner. Cause like when you were watching, dude, you were like a sponge. I remember you'd watch for like a day or two and you'd be like, Oh God, let me, let me go teach someone how to do this. And yeah. right away was able to pick it up. And, um, that's not something you can teach to people. Yeah. I learned, I learned through application. Yeah. So when, when I'm learning something, I have to go and apply it or else I'm just, I don't retain it very well. Um, that definitely a big, definitely a big shout out to my dad. I remember back when I was, I was 20. Shout out Ted. I was 20 years, <laughs> I was 20 years old when I started under you and had just moved down, was super broke. Cause I blew through all my savings. Like the first couple months. Sorry for the interruption really quick. If you've made it this far and you haven't liked or subscribed to the channel or platform, whatever you're listening on, you need to do that right now. And I also want to say thank you so much for being here. On top of that, the worst thing happened during this interview. 
My camera stopped recording. I don't know why. This is a rookie mistake, and I want to apologize right now because the audio quality is about to drop tremendously, but the information and the value is the same. It's going to be absolutely amazing. There's a ton of great things said after this portion of the interview. So moving forward, the audio quality will be bad, but the information and quality of what we're giving you is fantastic. So if you can stay tuned, stay tuned, stay listening, it would mean the world to me. Enjoy. Shout out Ted. I was 20 years, <laughs> I was 20 years old when I started under you and had just moved down. I was super broke because I blew through all my savings, like the first couple months being there. And I was like, Hey dad, like, it's a really good opportunity. It's also a little bit of an investment. <laughs> yep. um, you know, life now has become so much more beautiful because of that investment. And I was happy to pay that money back. And man, like, I'm genuinely and forever grateful for like for you and for what you've been able to do for me in my life. And like I said, having the experience and coming in and mentoring under you, starting my career, helping the people that I've helped, making the impact that I've made or made and will continue to make. I don't think I'd trade it for the world, man. Like, I, it's amazing. Give me the chill, bro. <laughs> it's amazing. Appreciate genuinely. you, man. Yeah. Seriously, genuinely. And so, you know, now, now that we're in the thick of it, right, it's been two years now. You've been getting more experience training people. Um, you're a coach that I can trust with giving any client of mine while I'm on vacation yeah. or a client comes in, they're like, oh, you Jake's my guy, yeah. you know? And so this next step on your journey, right? We're getting to a point where we're, we're growing the online side of things. So not only are we getting online clients, we got a good mixture of online and in-person. Um, and what's beautiful, like you said, you have more experience now, you have more confidence yeah. as a coach. Because I remember early on, you were like, man, I don't know. And I was like, Jake, yeah. you can, yeah. you can. And, and uh, I think doubt. more than anything, <laughs> it wasn't the lack of skills. It wasn't the lack of anything. It was the lack of belief in yourself Absolutely, I and I think I've seen seen that uh, that flower blossom yeah. in a sense where you're like I know I could throw anyone at you you're like I got, got it yeah so one thing I want I would love for you to share because I think it's so unique about you Absolutely. and uh, one of the things I would love to hear you share more about is like some of the very without saying sharing client names obviously so mm -hmm. we keep it private but more importantly, like I'd love to hear about some of the types of people, some of yeah. the challenges of clients that you've had to deal with, um, the more challenging clients, but also like how rewarding it's been, yeah, and like some of the cool things that you've been able to do on that journey. So yeah, there's I mean there's so many, and you know, you know obviously working in the same space, you see all the different types of clientele that I have. I have people come in like I have I've had a lot of people come in for rehab. I've had I've worked with disabled people. I've worked with um, just ad work of athletes, gen pop. So, I mean, there's just so many different walks of life that mm -hmm. I've had the um, ability opportunity. to yeah, the opportunity to work with, and I'm, I'm so grateful for that. Um, I think, you know, one of the biggest su success stories that I've had, um, I have a client, and she'll know who this is <laughs> when yeah. she listens. Um, she came in post lower back surgery. Yep. Yeah. I remember. And that was like a a very significant surgery absolutely she, they operated on her spine um, so <laughs> no. I remember one of the trainers had came up to me and she was like hey like I have this referral for you um, she just had low back surgery and so I was like whoa like that's intense. that's that's intense that's exactly the word mm -hmm. I use that's intense and you know that's that's high risk and that's very high risk for our job. High reward. Yeah. High risk, high reward, but extremely high risk, especially when mm -hmm. you haven't worked with somebody with that severe of a case. Mm -hmm. And so in my mind, I was like, okay, let's do this. Like, <laughs> I got this. You know? So um, we brought her in and we started her kind of underneath those three pillars that I gave you earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Strengthen the core, mobilize the hips, decompress the spine. And so immediately off the back, we were able to find some success with uh, getting out of pain, right? And so she had just came from physical therapy. So she was rehabbed, but not strong, not strong, you mm -hmm. know? Like she, we needed to get her back to being strong, being pain-free and being comfortable in her own. Yeah, in her so, home, so right? when she came in, just to kind of elaborate a little bit, like when yeah. she came in, what was, what was the main thing she was experiencing? What was her 
um, mobility like or strength like and then when you finished or when yeah, where she is now like what 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 is that transformation been crazy like? crazy transformation um when she first came in her biggest um her biggest intolerance was her flexion intolerance so just like forward bending for people that might not know what yeah, yeah. just like bending over to pick something up and so it's caused pain yeah and she had a flexion intolerance and it was pretty pretty severe mm -hmm. um and she also had some sciatic pain so um, she was having pain basically from her lower back running down through her leg which you know I've dealt with myself and experienced myself and it can be very debilitating low back pain uh, for people who have never experienced it before it can be extremely debilitating it, it is the type of pain that makes you question a lot of things you're like you're like oh my god like, here. can I bend over to pick this up or am I gonna or am I gonna throw my back out or it should it just getting up laying down everything is painful when you're dealing with with severe low back pain and so we got her in we got her training and so one of the first things that i did and i think this might be a little controversial is i had her deadlift and the reason why i had her deadlift is not so we could throw on like eight plates on the bar and start ripping 405 off the ground Dude. it's not i'm not trying to I'm not trying to breed a power lifter yeah off you know i'm just trying to teach her the mechanics of let's teach you how to pick something up and put it down with correctly good with good form because that is one of the biggest triggers is people will go to pick something up like a box when they're moving or for her she has she has a kid like yeah, you know, at the time and at the time the kid was young so she's picking the kid up and transferring the kid and then putting the kid back down into the crib um and so if you're going through and you're doing that multiple times a day and you're doing that incorrectly, you are just going to be loading your spine as opposed to loading the musculature. And if you're her, that's extremely dangerous because you just had surgery on your spine. Mm -hmm. So there's no, there's no room for that. There's no, you know, so one of the first things I taught her was, all right, let me teach you how to pick things up and put them down incorrectly. Let's teach your body how to move as yeah. one unit as opposed to your spine just moving the load. And that's, that's amazing. Yeah. And I think that, well, that's exactly why I wanted you to dive deeper into this because um, most people, when they think of pain or they have pain or they're experiencing these dis this discomfort or these uh, ailments in their life, instead of what they should do, what they're doing is they're going home and listening to maybe other people's opinions or doctors are saying like, oh, just rest. Yeah. You know? And All too common. And, and, and honestly, like it bothers me Rest because it's a painkiller, and they're just treating they're treating symptoms, not the yes. root cause. And by and large, the root cause is usually the mechanics. Yep. Like how you repeated, move? repeatedly going through bad mechanics, mm -hmm. just with day to day things. It doesn't have to be in the weight room. It's just in life. Like you gotta know. You know, if you're hurt, you got to know how to pick something up and put it down correctly or else you're going to put yourself at a high risk for re-injuring yourself, right? Absolutely. And so, you know, like I said, as controversial as it may be, I had her, I had her start deadlifting from day one. And, and it, since we then, started extremely light. We started with a kettlebell yep. that was elevated on a platform. Like, so she doesn't have, she didn't have to have this great mobility to go down and get it. Right, we just needed to teach the body how to move in one fluid chain. She was probably hinging enough to reach over to grab something yes. off like a desk. Yes, like, literally, like, just enough. Like yeah, very, very little mobility required. And what was like the weight? Was it like a sixteen kilogram? Dude, it was probably like a, lighter than that. An eight kilogram? And it was probably four kilograms. It was like you know the the colorful kettlebells that we have at the gym. Oh, the colored ones. The colored ones yeah. that are like hollowed out. But they're <laughs> yeah. large. Yeah. Was it the gray one? It was like the pink one. Oh, okay. Like, it was like the gray or the pink. I don't yeah. remember. It's been like, a, it was like Dude, a year and a half ago. Yeah. That's literally like 15 to 20 pounds. Yeah, it was Max. light. It was light. And I was like, you know what? Let's just pretend this is the weight of the child, right? That's that's the most practical application is let's just pretend you're picking up the child, right? Yeah. So we went through and I taught her the mechanics and yeah, so uh, like off off the jump, I was like, let's teach you the mechanics on top of on top of getting the core engaged, um, decompressing the spine, mobilizing the hips, all that good stuff, right? So, you know, training her, we we trained together for a solid, I think it was like a year and a half. Had to be, she just had recently to be, kind of yeah. went off and started doing her own thing, but we're still in touch, and you know, I check in with her. Um, but yeah, she, <laughs> dude, like by and large since starting training has been pain-free 
mm-hmm. and is super strong. Like by the yeah. time she was getting out of there, we had her on the trap bar, deadlifting like I think it was like a hundred fifteen pounds for sets of ten, yeah. and she's like this five foot tall. Like yeah. she's not like you know what I mean. She's, she's like five one, five two. She's like, like five two. She's like short, but she's jacked now. Like she's got strong yeah, legs, got extremely strong glutes, right? Yeah. Strong like strong abdomen as well. Yeah, and so. That was probably my biggest success story, just given the severity of the case and then being able to help her to uh, get back to life pain free and strong, strong as shit relative to her size. Yeah. yeah. And, and dude, like that's, that's absolutely amazing. I think as, as a client, like those things to her were for, forever amazing to her, I'm sure, because it was transformative in her own life where yeah. she's able to pick up her child now without having to worry about her back being thrown out she can probably do her just the day-to-day activities are now easier for her but most importantly for us as coaches like the most rewarding thing is seeing that change and seeing like man i had a girl come in to me she could only move uh pick up a barely pick up a 20 pound kettlebell and now 120 pounds on a bar for sets of 10 yeah. For sets of like ten to twelve, like That's dude, insane. we never even got close to one rep, like yeah. one rep max either, because we didn't want. I didn't want to play with those lower rep ranges too much. Like, there's just no point. It's like a five hundred percent increase, which <laughs> it's nuts. if I could increase my <laughs> it's man, nuts. if I get a hundred pounds yeah. to any lift, yeah, I would it's nuts. I would quit because that'd be awesome. <laughs> I'd be too good. Yeah, but. Dang, dude, that's amazing. And, yeah. and that, that goes to show your skills as a coach. And so simultaneously, though, um, life happens, yeah. right? And there's going to be a time, and there was a time, in which she was experiencing a little bit of pain, which I presume happened outside of the gym. Because when she's training with me, like it's, it's safe. I'm mm-hmm. making sure I'm watching everything, making sure it's safe. Now, I'm not perfect, and sometimes... Sometimes people move weird and I don't catch it and it happens. Like it's happened before and it's probably happened with you too. We're not perfect, Mm -hmm. right? But the cool thing is that when she would experience a flare up or when she was um, dealing with some type of residual pain or inflammation, whatever it may be, whatever was going on, um, we had methods that she could use by herself without me there to get her out of pain. And so to this day, like she still stays on top of those and... You know, I, I took the time to give her like a full sheet of homework and take her through all the homework while she was with me. And so she has a really good idea of what she can do. When um, it comes again. Yeah, and I have, I have multiple up. people like that. I'm sure you do too, where like yeah. we just, we show them what they can do without us being there or without even being in a gym for that matter. Just something they can do with their body weight to get out of pain. Always going above and beyond, man. Right? That's, I mean, but that's, that's what... That's what we do. Uh, 100%. You know, that's how we. That's how we make the impact. Hundred percent. Yeah. And what well, that number one. Thank you for sharing. That was inspired. That's absolutely inspiring. And um, it, it's cool because you know, seeing these journeys, seeing these people, and like from the outsider's perspective of like, I don't work with her directly, but I even saw over time it, oh, her yeah. in the gym, you like, there. her yeah. happiness, her confidence completely turning over Quality life and there's some other clients too like um i know jake actually he came to me and i was like i knew that the, the person he needed to work with he actually had a stroke yeah. and um he was very um debilitated from on one whole side of his body was ba- yeah. he's barely able to walk comfortably and yeah. uh, doing anything was was painful and, and really hard and, you know shaky and so when jake started with him i remember him like Jake would literally put a belt on him and hold him yeah. and help him step onto a, a three or four inch tall box. Yeah. I was like, man, this guy can barely walk up a curb. And I, I don't think people realize, but like, you should be grateful for your ability to do that. And um, this man, over time, like, he started doing this stuff on his own. Jake was just standing yeah. there just in case, but he started ste- doing step ups and doing like, farmers carries holding dumbbells i was like dude this is amazing to see yeah. and then jake also has another client that i have to mention which is she's in a wheelchair still with me to this day yeah it's she's like a she's a in a she's in a wheelchair and yeah. you know it, it is the most inspiring thing to see what you've done with her because i remember when she came in she was um yeah. very quiet very um 
weak in a, in, in a nice way. She just, she had tons of potential though. And I, I know one of the things that I've seen you post about that I think is so cool to hear and to see is like, I remember you had her like drag this rope. You had a kettlebell at the end, you had her drag the rope and then you started tying We started her. without the kettlebell. Yeah, we just yeah, started with just the rope. just the rope, yeah. And so like I would, so I'll take this battle rope and th we'll, I'll walk it across the turf at the gym. The turf is what, probably like 20 yards? 25. Yeah, 25 yards, I'll walk it across the turf and then I'll leave it at the end and then I'll go to one end with her and I'll hold the rope and then she'll be seated pulling the rope, right? So when we first so cool. started, uh, when we first started, it was like a five minute pull to get it across the turf with no added weight, just, just the weight of the rope, five minutes. Wow. I would say about, well, if we're t talking today's time, which is about a year and a half later, yeah. she is currently pulling that rope across the turf in one minute. She got Damn. down from five minutes five to actually times. sub sub one minute. The last time yeah. we timed it was about fifty five seconds. Insane. No, and you weight on it, down too. In, huh? And you weight. Yeah. On well, it. no. With, without the weight, she okay. pulls it okay. like at fifty five seconds. That's crazy. Yeah, that's like our that's like our PRs. Yeah. We go for like time, see how fast we can pull it. So but to train to pull it that fast, we started tying a kettlebell on like a thirty two yeah. pound or it's like a sixteen kg so like almost yeah thirty two pounds or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we'll tie it on and we'll just pull it across. It's it's a slow burn, but it's gotten her to the point where when we strip the kettlebell off she's freaking flying, dude. It's dude, nuts. It's so she's cool. also dropped down, I wanna say I think it's about thirty pounds, forty pounds, I don't know. Oh, I didn't like even that. Know. Yeah, she's yeah. lost a lot of weight. Dude. Yeah, she's lost a lot of weight. That's just just from moving her body. Dude. Just from moving her body. Yeah. And then I think you know, obviously the physical stuff is great, like, yeah. like getting stronger and losing weight. But yeah. more importantly, in my opinion, we built a, a beautiful relationship as people. Yeah. And like, we're just always shooting the shit, having a good time, yeah. and laughing. It's I just, see you guys laugh. It's just an time. awesome That's hour because we're just having a good time. Yeah. And um, I guess to that point too is, is the exercise, you know, is so conducive to the mental health, right? And, and bettering the mental health. Like, so for her, I think, She's a, a prime example of a client and, and the low, my lower back client who mm -hmm. we talked about earlier, you know. I think both came in in a position where their mental health was not as, um, as good due to where their body was at versus nowadays, in today's time frame, it being stronger, more pain-free. Yeah, um, yeah and I think, I think the mental health aspect is often overlooked as well. 100%, yeah. Man. And that's... And that's what I really wanted to highlight overall is that like, it's not like us as trainers, our goal is not, it, it, most often it's not even at all our goal, uh, unless it's specifically asked for for the client, but it's less about the weight loss. It's less about the muscle gain. It's more about the internal confidence. And when the clients start looking in, in the mirror and smiling, they start having open conversations like they start to make friends with other trainers and other people in the gym and like those clients all yeah, yeah, yeah yeah like it's dope it's awesome like, like your client we were just talking about in the wheelchair like i remember when she first came in very shy timid yeah. and I, I would talk to her a little bit and she was just like you're quiet now she'll go she'll be like, <laughs> so, so <laughs> like like just straight gangster rolling yeah. in just like what like we're always just shooting the shit yeah it's awesome yeah. like she, it's just it's a good time she's got some funny jokes yeah too. She, she's, she's hilarious she knows she who she is time. listening to yeah. this yeah she's funny she's giving me a hard time a few times she's, she's great um trust but, me me too and, and like the only reason uh I, w I wanted to single out a couple of those people because yeah. those ones really stood out to me but i mean all of your clients i see um, one specifically, uh, who's named after a mushroom, um, he <laughs> came he, in this morning. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's great too, man. I feel yeah. like I've seen him come out of the show. Like, yeah, it's funny. Absolutely. My favorite part is like when he first came in so quiet, like wouldn't talk to anyone, very like closed off. Yeah. Now I, I hear him like when I'm around, I don't know if he does it only when I'm around, but oh, he throws jabs at you. Like, oh, yeah. he'll, <laughs> he'll, oh, yeah. he'll like throw jokes. I'm like, dude, Loves he's my really, tattoos. really, yeah, he, hates <laughs> yeah. He, he comes out of his shell, man. And it's, he's it, it's my favorite part, he's man. It, it's like. Um, you know, being a coach, we, we build these deep relationships with our clients, that's what's and, all about. like our friendships. Yeah. And that's, that's one thing that I think is the coolest part about being a coach is building these like 
ideally li lifelong connections yeah. with humans and that are like great humans that you meet and uh, that diversity. You have people from all walks of life, from yeah. all areas of the world even. So, and so that's the difference in where, where I'm at in my career now at like two years in versus where I was at when I first started. When I first started, like it was, it was hard to see it that way because I was so focused on like, okay, I got to get them like, Results. fat loss I gotta get them muscle gain I gotta get them results where it's like nowadays yeah don't get me wrong it's still about that like, like we yeah. deliver on that but 100%. that comes as a byproduct of building healthy lifestyle habits yep. right and so I, I think both of us you know and not I don't want to talk on other trainers I've seen trainers and I don't think all trainers are like us in that regard. People. <laughs> yeah I don't think they're like us in that regard but I think from a standpoint of um what we want to help people achieve when they come in. I think we all are, you know, us as a team, we want to see people be the best version of themselves mentally, physically, and spiritually. And we try to help in any and all ways that we know how to. And um, I think for us, that also looks like embodying it too, right? Like we make conscious, healthy lifestyle decisions. And I feel like that's why people gravitate towards us to help them make those decisions as well right like mm -hmm. what types of movement would be best for them Absolutely. how to go through those movements specific dietary advice mm -hmm. hormonal advice whatever it may be like the you know 100%. lifestyle advice i think to to close that loop i think one of my favorite things to explain to uh past future current um clients is like so many people come in with the focus of I just need to lose this weight. I just want to lose this weight, or I just need to get more jacked, and so I can Why? be happier. And it's Why? like exactly what's driving it. At the end of the day, one of the things I see time and time again: the minute you take your focus off of the goal, and they shift towards the experience, the journey, they start focusing on, okay, I'm just gonna get really good at walking and getting my eight to ten thousand steps every day yep. or i'm just gonna get really good at making meals at home more often or i'm gonna get really good at not sitting at my desk all day and i'm gonna get up every hour and go walk for a couple minutes around my office those things when they start shifting their focus to those things what happens that's when the results start coming every yeah. freaking yeah. time man that's when the scale starts dropping that's when the muscles start showing that's when the progress pictures they look at them yeah. they're like Oh my, I didn't realize yeah. I lost three inches of my waist. When? Exactly. Because you weren't focused on it. So that being said, Jake, I think ultimately going into um, coaching, it seems like it was a calling for you. It seems natural. And yeah. I, I'd love to see it's, how far you've come. It's funny. I always, I always say this because it's true. I didn't, I didn't choose this path. This path just like, it chose me. Like, funny story I was enrolling for college and my neighbor across the street was helping me to enroll because he was at Moore Park College and he just had like experience with going through and selecting classes and make, like he just knew how to operate the system and he's like he's like what do you want to like what do you want to major and I was like I don't know business mm -hmm. everybody goes business route when they're undecided and he's like you should do kinesiology and I was like what's that <laughs> I, didn't even, I, didn't even know. I didn't even know i was yeah. i was like 18 just fresh out of high school you know young and dumb and doing <laughs> dumb things and so yeah that 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 path chose me like he 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 clicks kinesiology not me my dad comes home hey they need work they need employees to work at this pt office you'll wow. get the job if you go i i had no experience i had no business being there Dude, yeah. I was reading through medical charts. I had no knowledge of anatomy whatsoever. <laughs> it took me, it took them months, two months, three months to get me up to speed just to read the charts. And then, and then obviously, you know, you and I, we go way back. We, yeah. we've, we've known each other since like basically before I had memory of life. Yeah. So I run into you out here. Hey, come mentor under me. And it's, this is a, awesome avenue for a career yeah it's like, i don't know i gotta think about it you know, I go <laughs> do it. i'm like yeah this is dope yeah. all of it all when i when i look back and i reflect I, that's why i feel like I'm, I'm i'm always feeling like i'm doing the right thing is because i didn't have to it found me Naturally. all of it found me and i couldn't be more grateful i couldn't be more thankful to god because the 
I think the most important thing when we leave this earth is the impact that we've left while we were 100%. here. I don't think I would be as fulfilled or happy sitting in a desk job cubicle setting, maybe uh, making more money doing that or something. I don't know, but I wouldn't be, I don't think I would be as happy. You know what I mean? Whereas I, when I first started the career, it was slow. It was picking up and now it's picking up a little bit more just because I've had time to build and network being out here. I didn't know anybody out here when I started. So it was slow, it was a slow start. Um, but yeah, now we're to that point where it's starting to pick yeah. up and I'm super yeah. grateful, man. Like, Love it. I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. 100%. Man. Yeah. I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And, Absolutely. Uh, you know, <laughs> there's a couple things there that came up, but I'm like, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm going to hold these off because I know we're going to do some more podcasts in the future. But Absolutely. I want to know yeah. what's next for Drake. Huh. What's, what's coming next? Yeah. I know uh, you went through this whole journey the first two years of building your business it's scary as all hell oh yeah it's um, fun. And, and it's really starting to get some momentum in terms of in person the yeah. online as well so i want to know like what is what do you see in the next couple of years like what what growth do you want to see what kind of education what topics are you diving and in, delving into more now like what things is really fascinating jake and uh what are the next you know few years looking like in terms of like coaching and life yeah it's a good question um it's a very good question there's just so many things that run through my mind because i i love learning i'm a learner right um i i like i like the idea of having any and everybody being able to step into the gym looking for something and i could help them with that right 100 so you know, I want to continue to further my education with rehab. I'm going to continue to further my education with diet, nutrition, hormones, hormone imbalances, how to correct them. Um, as you know, people out there might not know, I'm also part-time mixed martial artist. I do jiu-jitsu yes. and Muay Thai, a little bit of boxing as well. So, that's um, what I was looking for. For me, I mean, that's 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 huge in my life. That's, that's something that I have found that has genuinely transformed me as a human, mm -hmm. uh, made me a much more peaceful person. I, I encourage, like, I encourage everybody to go through and do that because you learn a lot about yourself in the process. But for people that are, you know, coming in maybe looking for that as well, like learning how to just some some basics as far as like, hey, I want to be able to defend myself and yep. any and all situations. Be like, okay, cool. You know, let's go through some jujitsu. Okay, cool. Let's go through some striking. But I'm very new in that. Right, I've been doing yeah. it for about a year and a half now. So I see myself just continuing to uh, build and develop that skill set, and then also being able to um, offer it to others. Offer that to others, yeah. Dude, yes. And I would also like to uh, get involved with massage therapy at some point. So I just want to be like an all-encompassing, like, yeah. Hey, if you're looking for training, I can do that. I hey, if you're that, looking man. for rehab, I can do that. Hey, if you're looking for martial arts, I can do that. Massage therapy, I can do that. Just from just from years, like I'm talking like a decade of experience, not just like, oh, I went through and did this for like two days. Like, no, yeah. I want to go to- I took an online course yeah. and took us 10 bucks. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah. Like yeah. Bucks. yeah. Uh, Dude, that yeah. bothers me, bro. Oh, yeah. Can that's I talk a, about that for a second? Yeah, you can go ahead. Oh, just because you have a certification does not mean you know anything. And just because you've worked with a couple we people- see it all the time. Yeah, I mean- it's sad. I don't want to, actually, I actually don't want to do too much on that. I just want to say at the end of the day, when you meet a coach or you meet a client or you meet a coach or someone that's been a trainer, uh, whatever they qualify themselves as or call themselves, yeah. really, if you ever look to hire a coach, just know like what you look for is not the education on a sheet of paper. It has nothing to do with their degrees, their certifications has everything to do with who they are as a human. Is that someone you can deal with for hours and 100%. hours and then? I think one of the things that a lot of people 100%. don't actually think about is like some of my closest friends now are my clients. Yeah, dude. We spend like we spend a lot of time with them. Think about it. Like I have a client comes to me one hour, three days a week yeah. for the past three years. A it's minimum like, of three hours. Yeah. Like, you know, sometimes they're hanging out longer. So most of the week. The we hours I spend with my clients are typically more than sometimes what they spend with their family, exactly. their friends, the yeah. people that they love in their lives. Like, well, and for us, it's like that too. Like, yeah. We're spending more I've, time with I've them. Spent, I've built beautiful relationships with a lot of my clients. Yeah. And, yeah. and they're like, 
I know some things about my clients that their friends don't even know about them. Exactly. It's, like, it's crazy. It's great because it, that's what creates deep lasting, you know, com- like great, great humans. I, I honestly am so thankful to work with some of the yeah. best humans. Um, but ultimately, I think when you look for a coach, I think what you should look for is they're genuine wanting to help you. They're genuinely care about you, your health. And it's not just like, oh, I'll get you the fat loss or, oh, I'll, I'll get you the muscle gain. It's like, no, no, no. Like, there's a lot of other stuff going on in your lifestyle. So many other a lot things. of other things that we want to help with. And uh, I think when you take that all encompassing approach, it really uh, is in alignment with what this is, what TNT stands for, yeah, and why, why I wanted to start podcasting, why I wanted to start YouTube and doing yeah. more long form content. And so we can really put this out there and share with other people like what is right, what is wrong, but also like speak from our experiences of like how we've been able to help people. And um, I think you're an absolute asset to the team. Thank you. I think um, it, it's been an absolute pleasure to work with you. I'm so excited to see where this goes. And yeah, uh, and as well, I'm definitely excited to see what other things we're going to be bringing to the team, what other um, avenues we're going to be going down to bring to our clients to bring in more value. And uh, oh, I'm just, shoot. I'm just <laughs> extremely excited for the future, what's to come. 1,000%. And uh, just want to say thank you again for taking the time to uh, do thank this podcast you. with me, brother. Thank you.